And we are back live at JSU Stadium. The TV24 Regional Gridiron Challenge continues now with one of the marquee matchups of the day as we go into Class 6A with the Florence-Oxford matchup here at Burgess Snowfield. Mickey Shadricks and John Holder with you now for the play-by-play -play call of this one. And, John, this two great football teams, two great high school football programs, both playoff teams from a year ago, both are replacing some big-time players on offense. Oxford going to have to find someone to make up for the production they got from Rock Thomas. He's headed to Auburn. Meanwhile, Florence, Kendrick Doss headed to Ole Miss, their star quarterback from last year. And we'll see on the offensive side, Oxford does have their quarterback-wide receiver combo coming back with Ty Weber and Tredarian Gamble. Uh, on offense, there's some question marks maybe for Florence, but not on defense. Keaton Anderson, big-time Division I prospect at linebacker D. Smith, a safety 6'2", 195. He can go anywhere he wants, so we know the Florence defense is going to be good. And we know we've got some weapons on the Oxford offense. I think what we're looking at is what does the Florence offense bring to the table, but Mickey, they're dressing out 121 players. Somewhere in there you get you think they got to have some kind of offensive players. If you don't think Florence has got some defensive players, let me give you this. John Chavis is in the house. LSU defensive coordinator is here to scout out some of that talent on that Florence defense. Little Bird tells me we may have a word with him sometime during the game as well. Time for us to step, step aside one more time, and then we will be back for the start of Oxford and Florence. Should be a good one. Stay with us as TV24's coverage of the regional gridiron challenge continues live in just a moment. Stephen Gede for Alabama Senate District 12. Who is Stephen Gede? Stephen is just like you, just like the person next to you at church. Stephen Gede is just a family man trying to make a difference. Stephen believes that our government is out of control with spending and policies like Common Core, too out of touch with the citizens it's supposed to serve. Stephen believes in conservative principles, ideas like limited government and low taxes. Stephen will protect life and your Second Amendment rights. If you're like Stephen Gede, he would be honored to have your vote. People come from everywhere to get their deal from Bill Stanford. They come from Ashland, Brompton, Lineville. They come from Moody, Munford, Coldwater, Birmingham, Talladega, Lincoln, Riverside, Heffland. There's no better deal than a Talladega Bill deal. We know Talladega's a little bit out of the way, but our drive-out prices crush the competition. Come get your Bill deal from Bill Stanford in Talladega today. Come on out to Bill Stanford in Talladega. And there you see our matchup coming up, Oxford and Florence from Burgess Snowfield here at JSU Stadium. Sun beginning to set here. The Regional Gridiron Challenge, we've been with you all day long. Got started, John and I did, with our pregame show at 9 a.m. this morning, wearing jackets and holding an umbrella. And uh, got warmed up during the middle of the day. Now, sun starting to set, cooling off a bit, and uh, looks like a great evening for our final two games coming up, Oxford and Florence. Then right after this game, Aniston and Glinka. I can't recall a day, Mickey, in, the, in, in forever. We've seen all four seasons in one day. We had winter this morning. We got a little bit of touch of fall in the air for tonight. But it kind of feels like springtime out there. And a couple hours ago when the sun was out bright, down on the field anyway, it felt like summertime. And we've had a whole four seasons in the span of about 10 hours here at Burgess Snowfield. Big boy 6A football coming up. Oxford already on the field. And those 121 Florence Falcons about to make their entrance from the northeast corner of Burgess Snowfield here at JSU. These two teams met last year at Brawley Stadium at Florence. It was a four-touchdown performance by Rob Thomas, who's now on his way to Auburn, including a 70-yard touchdown run, Mickey, with about five minutes to go in the game. That was the difference as Oxford won that game 26-20. Two years ago, they played in a game that we saw down at Lamar Field. Uh, Oxford was a winner in that game as well, beating Florence 35-7. So you know there's got to be some extra incentive from the Florence folks to try to get a little retribution against uh, Oxford here in this spring gridiron challenge here at JSU. Ryan Herring entering his second season as head coach of the Yellow Jackets. Meanwhile, J.B. Wallace beginning his first season as head coach at Florence, taking over for acclaimed high school coach Jamie DuBose, who led the Falcons to a great season last year. And you know what's interesting about Florence in 2013 
folks may forget they were they they only lost to Hoover in the third round by one point and by most accounts they should have won that game. Florence was a was a strong team last year and expected to be a strong contender again this year. We'll begin the game with the Oxford Yellow Jackets on offense. There you see Ty Weber as John mentioned at our open. He is returning starter at quarterback actually will be entering his senior season as a three year starter. He does have Trey Gamble, his wide receiver threat, who set a school record last year for Oxford in receiving yards, but they will have to find a replacement for their star running back, Rock Thomas, Mr. Football from a year ago. And that may be a little bit of a job by committee for the Jackets till they kind of figure out who steps up and takes over that spot. Here we go, first and 10 Jackets at their 30. Weber fakes up the middle, keeps it himself, and he is wrapped up by Florence's D. Smith, one of those Division I prospects that we talked about. And now we take a look at the Oxford Yellow Jackets starting lineup, brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Surrett, Owens, Waits, Hill, and McGuffey, your offensive line. We mentioned Trey Gamble, returning star from last year, also Truett and Sears at receiver. In the backfield, Ty Weber, the returning starting quarterback. Justin Smith gets the call at tailback. Kevin Johnson at fullback. Second down and nine. Weber again keeps it. Breaks one tackle, then is stood up by Jacoby Bird. Our correction, that is Keaton Alexander, the other big prospect we talked about, the linebacker who has multiple SEC offers. It goes about 6'1", 220. Here is the defensive starters. Mansell, Johnson, Dollarson, White, and Thompson. Then there's Keaton Anderson. We just talked about him. Also Curry, Lee in the secondary, along with Alexander, Smith, and Oakley. So third and long now for the Jackets right off the bat here from their 33-yard line. Let's see if the Jackets look Gamble's direction. Weber rolls. And he is looking for Gamble, but overshoots him there. But he was covered well by B.J. Oakley and also Lamar Lee. Mansell Johnson and Dollarson, that front line is a college-sized front. They have some absolute monsters up there on that front line. Those guys are all about 6'2", 6'3". Look like they weigh in around 290, 300 pounds. A very athletic and big front line on defense for this Florence uh, Falcon team. And Mickey, that's the thing we've been hearing about Florence is their defense is gonna be outstanding. Maybe the best defense in the state in class 6A coming up this year. Yeah, talking with uh, Coach Wallace earlier this week, defense not really his concern, concerned about his offense. And we will get a look at that offense here is after the, the punt, Florence will have it in good field position, first and 10 at their own 38 yard line. Here's a little pitch to Russell. And good job defending that play out on the corner by the Oxford Yellow Jackets number 20, K.J. Adams. Here is the offensive starters for Florence. Up front, Brewer, White, Olive, Beasley, and Burbank. Frederick, Russell, and Sigler. And here we see a quick snap. Football hit the ground, and fortunately for Florence, they were able to get back on it. Number eight, Roland Adams. So uh, a negative play here. And we'll take a look at the rest of the starters. Uh, quarterback Blake Hawkins and then uh, Adams, who just recovered that fumble. Also William Bennett, wide receiver. Florence going in a hurry. Third down and 13 back at their 35. So the Oxford defense with a chance to return the favor and pitch a three and out here to start the game. Hawkins with time, turns it loose, and the official says incomplete. Intended target was Dylan Frederick. Looked like he might have scooped it up at the 45. Wouldn't have been a first down anyway, but the official says incomplete. Good defense by Oxford there. Just another incomplete pass. And so now they'll bring the ball back inside the 40. It's fourth down. Looks like we'll have a, I'm assuming we're gonna have a punt here. 
officials are giving the indication that Lawrence is indeed going to have what we call the virtual punt. Remember, there's no live kicking in this game as far as punts go. And uh, so there'll be a 30-yard standard punt that they will have. So a three and out on the first series by Oxford, a three and out on the first series by Florence. So defense has been the story here in the early going first three minutes of the game. Well, we've seen it all here today, John. And there we see uh, got a camper here at uh, Burgess Snowfield. I have no idea about that one. <laughs> Even Mike Hathcock says he, he doesn't know about that one. I'm not sure either. I have to agree with Mike. Uh, some kind of a tent set up in the end zone. That's an Oxford tent, it appears. Could be one of our crew taking a nap. <laughs> and I would understand that as long as they've been here. <laughs> Giving them ideas. First and 10 now. Jackets with their second offensive possession from the 32-yard line. Weber out of the shotgun, looks right, looks left. Still looking and just gets rid of it. The coverage in the secondary, no one open. And it'll be second down to 10. Great defense. Florence once again bringing in William Barrett, applying some pressure there for the Florence Falcons. And just both of these teams not able to get anything going. I think really the passing game they've tried. Both teams have tried to get something going with a short passing game and just not able to connect there and get anything going. So some stagnant offenses for both the Yellow Jackets and the Falcons. Second down and 10. Florence shows blitz off the edge. They bring the linebacker and Oxford leaves it on the ground. Flag comes in after the play. Very minimal gain that time. I think we saw an early indication of maybe a hold there, either a hold or a face mask. We'll see where it is. What the official is going to call there, kind of a weight flag coming in and was thrown right into the middle of that scrum of players. So go either way here. They're po pointing toward Florence. So it's like it may be a face mask here. That was Thomas Rudolph on the carry. He will share time with Justin Smith at that tailback position. Oxford, by the way, there's about five or six players who would normally be starting that are being held out of this game. I think that's a theme we've heard a lot today. Uh, not a lot of teams holding guys out for various reasons, injuries. So second and five, Gamble goes up and does what he always does. It was great coverage by Lamar Lee but I don't know, John, Trey Campbell may be the best I have ever seen at coming down with the football. You just have to get it in his neighborhood, and most of the time he does this. Well, the difference in elite wide receivers. I mean, there's good wide receivers, and then there's guys that go to the next level. He shows right here why Tredarian Gamble is a next-level elite wide receiver because, folks, that's a big-time play. A lot of receivers can catch tough passes, but that's what you mentioned, Mickey. That's the difference in a Trey Gamble and your normal high school wide receiver is a catch like that. And he even mistimed his jump and still came down with it. Jackets in business now, first and 10 inside the Florence 30. Rudolph up the middle, he's popped. Big number 93 was the first man there. Malik Mansell, the big defensive tackle we talked about. Numerous offers, many of them from Conference USA and Sunbelt. Goes 6'3", 257. Here's a look at Ryan Herring entering his second season as head coach of the Jackets. Former head coach at Lincoln and Shelby County, but most known as a former player for his father, Robert Herring, who led the Jackets to their three state championships in school history. Ryan Herring taking over at his alma mater for the Oxford Yellow Jackets. Second down and 10 now. Weber keeps it. Finds a little daylight over the right side. Dives down to about the 22-yard line. D. Smith, a talented free safety, coming up and getting some pads on Ty Weber, so it's going to be another third down play coming up for the Jackets. Big third down and four situation coming up here for Oxford. And they're in the uh, part of the field here. If they can get a first down right here, and that will put them inside the 20-yard line, they would be in good position to maybe get an opening score here. So only 10 on the play clock as they break the huddle and come to the line. Third down. 
Here comes a blitz by Florence. The handoff to Rudolph up the middle, trying to cut back to a hole, could not break free. Florence so quick on defense. Number four, the outside linebacker, Cody King, wrapped him up before he could break free. And John, with Florence coming with the blitz off the corner, if Rudolph could have got into that lane, he would have been gone. Just couldn't be there, uh, couldn't get to that hole quick enough, and now it brings up a big fourth down and two. No question, looks like here that Oxford's going to go for it. They can kick field goals. There's no rush allowed on that, so basically it's a free kick. But at this point in time in a spring game, Coach Herring on fourth and two is just going to go for it here at the 20-yard line. Fourth down. See what the Jackets dial up here. Weber fakes, keeps it, and he's going to have the first down and more. Ty Weber will score. Touchdown Oxford as the Jackets strike first. Great play fake by Weber. Saw the hole cut to the inside. No one was there. He outran the outstanding All-State safety, D. Smith, to the end zone for the touchdown. Got past the line of scrimmage. Smith tried to come over to track him down, but too late to get there. Good move by Ty Weber to get to the end zone, and Oxford draws first blood here at the Gridiron Challenge. The big throw and catch from Weber to Trey Gamble sets up the Jackets in great position. And the extra point is good by number 19, Keaton Borelli. So Oxford takes a 7-0 lead. Nine minutes still to go here in our first quarter. We're back to JSU Stadium after a brief timeout. Dive into some great deals this summer at Superior Hyundai and make a splash with Tires for Life. Superior Hyundai is offering you Tires for Life with every Superior Hyundai purchase. Superior Hyundai's already come with America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 mile powertrain, and now Tires for Life. Good credit, bad credit, we can get you approved. Don't wait, hurry into Superior Hyundai in Aniston or visit us on the web at superiorhyundaial.com and like us on Facebook. Hi, my name is Reverend Jeffrey C. Williams, the owner and licensed funeral director of Anderson Funeral Services. At Anderson Funeral Services, we are compassion and caring individuals committed to providing quality and professional service at affordable prices. We are where service begins and never ends, and love is what love does. Anderson Funeral Services offers affordable services to meet any need for all families. Anderson Funeral Services, 630 South Wilmer Avenue, where service begins and never ends. And there's a look at the Glencoe Yellow Jackets as they will be playing after this game against the Anniston Bulldogs in the final game of the 2014 TV24 Regional Gridiron Challenge. Well, Coach Osment for a, two years at Glencoe has been talking about this bunch. He's got a class of 22 seniors coming up, including his oldest son, Thomas Osment, at running back. He's been really excited about that team. I'm going to be excited to see them here in our nightcap against Anniston later on. Let's see if Florence has an answer here. Hawkins swings it out for A.J. Nance, and he is popped by Thomas Rudolph, who broke quickly on that play. Great job by Rudolph. Nance never had a chance as that ball was out there quickly, but even if he would have caught it, he would have been nailed for a loss there. Good defense by Oxford, and Oxford's come to play is on really the offensive and defensive sides. Here's the give to Adams. And can't break free of guess who? Thomas Rudolph again. He is all over the field here for the Yellow Jackets. A loss that time, and there's the defense of starters now on Mickey for the Oxford Yellow Jackets. Jermaine Taylor, Paul Corrick, Hurd, and KJ Britt, and KJ Adams. Also Lloyd Shake and Isaac. And in the secondary, Franks, Rudolph, and Sears. Rudolph off to the great start here for Oxford defensively. Screen pass, Adams set up beautifully. He's into the secondary. He's got first down yardage and more. Barrels his way out to the 44-yard line, a pickup of 14 yards, and that was executed to perfection. A great setup by Hawkins that time. Perfect setup, as you'll see. Let's the defenders come in, then throws it over their head. And look at the downfield blocking. He got two great blocks that opened up a big lane. That's what allowed him to get the first down. Hurry up offense here as they hand off to Adams. Backside penetration gets there in a hurry for the Jackets getting up off the bottom of that pile. Number 52, Paul Cork. Certainly size not an issue on either the offensive or defensive side for Florence. It's a massive offensive front working in front of Hawkins. Second down and eight. 
They leave it with Adams up the middle. Gets a good hole. Knocked off his feet by Jacob Shake, but not before he rambles up field for about eight or nine. It's going to set up a third and very short now. Florence again right back at the line of scrimmage. This is the theme you see in football these days. No huddle, hurry up offense. And Florence close to first down yardage. Roland Adams here, a workhorse in the first half. And first quarter I should say and he didn't get much but got just enough. He sure did inside the 45 yard line. We're seeing Adams now starting to find some holes. He's doing a good job of picking his holes. Good job of running the, the run before that where he got eight or nine yards. Not a whole lot there but he was able to slide through the hole and a couple of first downs in a row now by the Falcons. Fake to Adams. Throw over the middle. All had his man wide open. A.J. Nance was free in the secondary. Had a lot of room to run and just took his eye off the football. First play of this drive, Nance did not have a chance, but this time he did have a chance to make a great play. That would have been easily a first down and a whole lot more there if he could have tracked that down. But now it's second and ten again for Florence. And a whistle before the play. Probably a false start on Florence here, and that'll back them up another five to the 50. And we'll get the official call here, and it is motion penalty to back it up to the 50. It'll be second down and 15. Hawkins has his troops set. Fakes it, keeps it, turns it upfield and spins down to the 44-yard line. Not a speed demon by any means, but an effective run that time by Blake Hawkins. So uh, it'll be third down and nine coming up for the Falcons. And we've got some movement up front and a flag. The center leaned forward, not sure if he was just getting set. Then the Oxford nose guard, Paul Corrick, leaned forward and I think made contact in the neutral zone. So we'll let the officials sort this out. Yeah, the uh, Florence players are clapping, and I think that five yards that Florence had on a motion penalty, they're going to get that five yards back on an offside by Oxford. That'll move the ball inside the 40. Really, at this point in time, Mickey, right now, it is perfect weather. I don't think you could ask for anything more perfect than what we have now. The sun's kind of setting. Temperature's very nice outside. Just beautiful, perfect weather for football. So after the penalty, Florence a little better situation now, a third and four, and most likely in four-down territory anyway at the Oxford 44. Hawkins. Little option play, pitches to Adams, ball hits the ground. Adams recovers it, but back at the 44. So a negative play here on third and four, and most likely will take Florence out of that four down situation. Very fortunate to get the ball back and not give Oxford the ball at the 45. Instead, uh, they'll get the ball and basically uh, punt the ball away, it looks like. J.B. Wallace, first-year coach now, just named back a couple of months ago as the head coach on February the 8th. Before that, he was the defensive coordinator at Florence for the last two years, and they're going to go for it on fourth down here. And we're going to have a flag on the play as the ball goes out of bounds. But you saw also in the graphic there, Mickey, where he coached not only with Jamie Dubose at Florence, but he coached under J.B. Du Jamie Dubose and former Prattville and Jackson State head coach Bill Clark on those great Prattville teams that we had in the mid-decade of the last decade. So he's he's been under some good ones at both Florence and at Prattville. Yeah, I talked to him last week uh, or just a few days ago. He was very complimentary of Bill Clark, as are most coaches who have worked under Bill Clark. And so they elected to go for it, Mickey, on fourth and ten. And the penalty was going to be on Florence, a pass out of bounds. So they're, instead of pinning Oxford deep with a punt, it would have put it at the 15-yard line. They're going to give Oxford the ball at the 45. So big turn of events there with that failed fourth down conversion. See if the Jackets can take advantage. Screen pass out to Gamble. But a great defensive play by the Falcons. But Gamble is still loose and running. Can he turn the corner? No, the pursuit will finally catch up to him. The initial play was made by Darquez Montgomery, 
as he stopped Gamble but couldn't get him off his feet. Gamble made it interesting for a few seconds anyway. He almost turned the corner a la Marcus Allen there, but he wound up losing 13 yards just to get out of that one tackle, then sheds another tackle, a third tackle, a fourth tackle by the big defensive lineman, and it looked like he might be able to turn the corner, but the numbers game was just too much, and Gamble loses 13 yards all the way back to the 32-yard line. But that's amazing, the three or four tackles that he broke against a very good and well-tackling uh, Florence team. High risk, high reward decision didn't work out. Now Oxford in a big hole after having good field position. Second and a long way to go. Weber runs the option. Pitches to Rudolph. Rudolph almost broke it, but there's that outstanding safety, D. Smith, that we keep talking about over and over again. Rudolph gets about eight of that back as they'll mark the ball at the 40-yard line. Still a long way to go. Third down at about 15 here. We go under five minutes to play first quarter. Quickly moving first quarter. Big play here for the Florence defense after giving Oxford great field position by going for it on fourth down. If they hold them here, be a big stop for that defense. Third down, Weber going to go up top for guess who? Gamble. Gamble cannot make the catch. He would have been out of bounds, and he was covered. He was blanketed. Number 21, Oakley, and number 5, Lee, were right there with Gamble, and we can see how uh, Coach Wallace and his defensive staff, they're going to double-team Trey Gamble when they need to. But you know, Mickey, even though he would have been out of bounds, as you pointed out, he's double-covered all over him and still almost makes yeah. that catch out of bounds. So there's the virtual punt. Really kind of a missed opportunity there for Oxford. They had the ball at the 45-yard line and some momentum. And uh, now after the punt, they'll give it back to Oxford. They had some really good field, uh, back to Florence, I should say. They had some really good field position there and just not able to take advantage of it. So here come the Falcons back on offense. There you see the quarterback. Good look at Blake Hawkins. Takes it to Adams, keeps it himself, and Hawkins is free. Touchdown saving tackle by the Jackets, Austin Klein. And we think of Hawkins as maybe more of a drop back passer, guy that likes to stay in the pocket, but that time he pulls it down on the sprint draw and gets some good yards, shows some good wheels out there as he turned the corner and picked up about 20 yards. First down at the midfield strike. Hawkins over the middle. He's got his man. The big tight end making the grab. That is Tucker Seigel. And another big gain for Florence. And we've got an injured Oxford player down at the 25-yard line. Well-designed play. Found in the seam. The big tight end. Nice catch with both hands extended. Tucks it away. Carries a couple of defenders with him, and he's able to pick up about 27 yards all the way down to the Oxford 23. So a couple of big plays in a row. Hawkins with a big run, and Hawkins with a big pass to the tight end. Falcons getting it going now. Hawkins swings it out to Russell. And Russell, not much, picks up about three yards before he is tackled at the 20-yard line by a couple of Yellow Jacket defenders, including linebacker Tanner Lloyd. He looks like he's maybe about five foot seven, maybe five foot seven, and weighs about maybe 170 pounds, but he may be also the quickest player on the field. Hawkins throws a little too low, had his receiver open at the first down marker. It was intended for William Barrett, but again, Barrett tried to go down and get it, but that low pass enabled that Oscar defender to come up and break it up. Barrett with the drop there. He would not have had the first down, but it would have been more of a makeable third down instead of a third down at about seven. And again, we've got movement by the Oxford defensive line. Looks like another penalty against the Jackets. Lawrence players are clapping their hands, and the Oxford players are throwing their hands up in the air, so that indicates this penalty probably going to be another offside, second possession in a row, a defensive offside by Oxford. They're going to wave it off, so... They're going to say no flag on the play. And now a timeout, Mickey, going to be taken by Oxford here. They're one timeout of the first quarter. All right, timeout on the field. 317 left in our first quarter. We will take the break as well. 
Oxford leading 7 to nothing. Florence threatening. Excitement is in the air for Peggy Miller Walker, and it's all because she's running for circuit court judge in Calhoun and Cleburne counties. Peggy has always made public service a priority. So why not give her your vote on June the 3rd to meet the needs of families and children? Hi, I'm Peggy Miller Locker. I ask for your vote on June the 3rd. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of children and families in Calhoun and Cleburne counties. Paid for by the committee to elect Peggy Miller Locker. For an affordable private Christian education, choose Cusa Christian School in Gadsden. Cusa Christian offers a Bible-based biblical worldview curriculum for a solid spiritual foundation while also providing the highest standards in academics, activities, and athletics. Cusa Christian can accommodate your child from daycare through the 12th grade with 90% of our graduates going to college and 63% of them receiving scholarships. Plus, our nine athletic programs compete in the Alabama High School Athletic Association. For more information, call our office or visit online. And we are back, Burgess Snow Field, JSU Stadium, third down and seven for Florence, and Adams can't get free out of the backfield. Great penetration by the Yellow Jackets there. Actually, that was number 25 on the carry, Cameron Davis. That's going to bring up fourth down and nine after that play lost a couple of yards. Well, Mickey, they went for it on fourth and ten at the 45-yard line, so no question they're going to go for it on fourth and nine at the 23. Oxford showing blitz off the corner. Hawkins sees that, looks over to the sidelines. Here come the Jackets. They bring two off the corner, middle screen. Great play call for the Oxford defense that time, but Adams unable to get the first down. And so Oxford will hold as the defense comes up with a stop. Florence's first major threat of the night comes up empty. Correction, that was number nine, Jacoby Bird on the middle screen. Well-designed play, had the blockers out there, but credit the Oxford defense for getting in there and getting the stop about a yard and a half short of the first down. And will not have the best field position as Oxford now begins this drive with their own 14-yard line, 2.33 to go. There's the Florence coaches. They're on the opposite side in the old press box here at Burgess Snowfield here at JSU. Jackets in a hole. Worst field position for them of the game as they start this drive inside their 15. Ty Weber keeps it himself, and Weber's been Oxford's offense. He and Gambler. And Weber picks up about nine yards on that carry. A little slow to get up. And if you're a Florence fan, perhaps watching us on the live stream at TV24.tv, the Burgess in Burgess Snow is former Oxford head football coach and former Jack State coach Bill Burgess and the current coach here at Jacksonville State new head coach John Gross, also a former Oxford high school head coach. So a lot of Oxford Jack State connections down through the years. Second down and a yard for the Jackets. Favorable down in distance here. Weber going to lose yardage and not what coach Herring wanted to see on a second and one <laughs> they're going to lose about four or five yards back to the 20. Mickey I think also if you are in Florence you're probably a UNA fan and I would imagine if you've got some age to you you, you know who Bill Burgess is from all the, <laughs> the Jack State UNA battles back in the old Gulf South Conference days. Yes, indeed. Some great games there in the, that series history. And we mentioned Weber was a little gimpy after that first down nine-yard run. And now after that play, you see him grasping his right ankle. And whoever Oxford's backup quarterback is may see some early time here at the, uh, the regional gridiron challenge. Certainly for one play they are. Trainer David Weeks out there to help him off. And uh, we're going to see some changes here, obviously, as it looks like he's going to be okay, but they're going to bring him off and check him out for at least a play or two here with 1.31 to go. We've had a little bit of a mini halftime. They're treating the 15-minute quarters really essentially as halves, so that will help that Oxford only has 1.31 to go to that half. That will allow them, Mickey, a little extra time to maybe look at Ty Weber, and we've got a new quarterback coming in for Oxford. That is Jacob Sears. He will get the call. The backup quarterback comes in on a third and five now as Weber goes to the sideline. We'll keep an eye on his status. Sears gets right into the action, keeps it himself, and picks up about three to the 23. And that will 
bring up fourth down. And Lawrence defense comes up with the big stop and they will get the football in outstanding field position. Oxford, actually Florence going to take their one timeout of the first quarter here with 107 to go. As they're going to get the ball back on the, looks like fourth and two. You would think Oxford with a new quarterback in the game, Mickey probably would punt the ball here at their own 23 yards. Yeah, line. up seven nothing. I would be shocked if they they did not. But Florence is uh, John. The last series, last couple of series, they uh, seem to finally be getting it going offensively. So they're going to have outstanding field position when we resume play and they've uh, had some inconsistency on offense you would expect that with the new quarterback you know we mentioned Kendrick Doss the outstanding quarterback for the last couple of years for Florence who is now going to be playing his college football for Hugh Freeze and the Ole Miss Rebels and the SEC they lost seven division one prospects last year Mickey most of those guys that signed were on the offensive side but they also lost a great offensive lineman Cole Harden going to Vanderbilt to play for the Commodores and that's been a big loss in the offensive front. Yeah, when you talk about these two teams from a year ago, of course, everybody knows about Rock Thomas and what he was able to do for Oxford. Thomas rushing for well over 2,000 yards for the Jackets, 17. Or I should say uh, over 30 touchdowns. Meanwhile, Kendrick Doss, the former quarterback for Florence, he threw for over 2,000 yards, threw for 17 touchdowns, and ran for another 1,000 yards and 18 touchdowns. That's a lot of offensive production for both of these football teams which is obviously why they had such great seasons. Hawkins has a man open. Making the catch is Dylan Frederick. And Oxford will take him down at the 21-yard line. But great throw and catch on first down. And that was a great adjustment to the football by Dylan Frederick. Ball kind of hanging up there, goes up and gets it between two defenders. And then it's another extra four, five, or six yards after the catch. Good play by Dylan Frederick, the wide receiver for Florence. Kind of sense the momentum shifting to Florence here. Number 25 on the carry, Cameron Davis. He is wrapped up right about at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a, a gain of one. Good job there by the jacket defense. Looked like he had a big hole there, but it closed quickly. So Florence threatening again the second possession in the row that they've been basically down maybe not in the red zone the last time but they are down now just inside the red zone at the 20 but they've been inside the 25 for two consecutive possessions now. Hawkins raises up throws high and it's picked off. Deflection off the intended receiver Seigel and it is picked off by the Yellow Jackets. I believe that was Sears. Yes it was Jacob Sears. And he returns it out across the 25-yard line. Seigel hitting himself in the head. What you don't want to do if you don't catch it, you don't want to tip it up and create that old good defensive tip drill. And that's exactly what he did. Seigel was hitting himself in the side of the helmet as he came off. He knew he made a big mistake there by putting that ball up for grabs by not catching it. And another turnover. Basically, we've seen two great defensive stands here by the Oxford defense. And, you know, Hey, we talked about the Oxford offense, but this Oxford defense has probably been the most impressive thing we've seen here in this first quarter. Yeah, a little bend, but don't break defense. Florence got to be frustrated. Two trips deep inside Oxford territory, no points. So here come the Jackets, and Ty Weber is back in the game. Good to see there. He has carried the ball several times here for the Jackets in the in the first quarter would not be surprised at all to see some other players start to get some carries that's number six Justin Smith 6 -1, 190 junior picks up nothing there actually he will lose a yard and that will take us to the end of the first quarter it has been a good one as we expected between two great high school football programs Oxford and Florence here at the TV 24 regional gridiron challenge seven to nothing we'll be back with second quarter action in just a moment We're making a new Honda at Sunny King Honda more affordable than ever with low, low lease payments all month long. Lease a new 14 Accord LX for only $199 a month. Lease the all-new 14 Civic LX for only $159 a month. Lease the CRV LX two-wheel drive for only $209 a month. We have a great selection of certified used Hondas, all with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Sunny King Honda exit 188 off Interstate 20, where customer satisfaction is king. 
Looking for a place to have dinner with your family or that special someone? Why not try Athena's, a unique Tuscan grill specializing in Italian fare. From Italian meats sliced daily and baked to perfection to healthy choices for little ones. We look forward to seeing you soon for your next lunch or dinner. Or contact us to help you plan your next party or event because Athena's is all about casual yet sophisticated dining. Hi, this is Vernon Thomas, General Manager, Sunny King Toyota and Scion. If you're looking for a used car, we got Chevrolet used Toyota. She's looking at a used Nissan, Ford, Chrysler. We got whatever you want. And how about this? We got the financing. Bankruptcy, it don't matter. Got a little money down or no money down. Give us an opportunity. Our secondary finance can get it done. Come see these and all the great deals on these Sunny King Toyota and Scion on a new motor mile in Oxford, Alabama. Where the customer is king. Forsyth Builders are passionate about what they do. A full-service contracting firm, Forsyth handles a variety of jobs, including industrial, commercial, renovations, and new construction. Forsyth has become a leader in construction management and has constructed or made additions on a number of area businesses like Noble Bank and ABS Business Systems, additions to Aniston's Country Club and f and Bank. Remember to make Forsyth Building Company your first choice for quality construction. And the TV24 Regional Gridiron Challenge is presented by the Calhoun County Chamber of Commerce. Calhoun County, a natural attraction. Learn more at visitcalhouncounty.com. Second quarter action or second half action, if you will, whichever you prefer, playing 15-minute quarters here in the uh, Regional Gridiron Challenge. So basically each team is getting two and a half quarters of play which uh, most coaches are very happy with that. That's plenty of football for a spring game. And we got a good one here. Seven nothing Oxford with the lead. Really the, the biggest difference in this game was that big pass play to Trey Gamble that set Oxford up and they were able to cash in their opportunity. Florence has had a couple of opportunities in the red zone but two turnovers. Florence will have another opportunity. We kind of reset things here for the second quarter, so they'll begin this like you would a second half. Florence will have the ball first. Oxford had the ball first to begin quarter number one at their 30. Florence begins this possession as they begin quarter number two or half number two, if you prefer, at their own 30. They get five yards right off the bat on first down. John, both teams really using their quarterbacks here in the running game. Hawkins has ran, had several carries, as has Weber. This time it is Roland Adams. Very little gain up the middle. Host of jackets converge on him there to stop him for a short gain. It'll set up a third down and two now for Florence. If you are a football fanatic like we all are here at TV24, this has been really a dream come true today. <laughs> I, I have enjoyed today immensely. And jumped another, off sides again. another penalty going to get unless there was a flinch by that right tackle. Florence is going to get a first down via penalty. And I didn't see it. I think he just jumped right in there, made contact with the guard over, I should say the tackle over here. And that's costly this time. First couple of times that did not result in a first down. But this offside, the third one of the game on a third down and two will give Oxford or should say give Florence an easy first down. So costly, costly offside that time for Oxford. New set of downs for the Falcons as they operate from their 43. Read play there. Hawkins keeps it right up the middle, crosses the 50. Hard running there by the Florence quarterback as he picks up close to eight yards. And John, he's a he's a big guy. He's tall and got some meat on him and not a not the fastest guy in the world, but he he sees the hole, got good vision, and he runs north and south. You know, Jay, uh, Jamie Wallace, I don't think by any stretch of the imagination does he have a, another Kendrick Doss on his hands. But I'll tell you what, I think he's got a pretty solid quarterback. I think he's going to be very well pleased with the kind of season Hawkins is going to have. And same play right up the middle. Hawkins is going to have his first down inside the Oxford 45-yard line. And a tackle made there by the Jackets, K.J. Britt. But Florence has found something here. And Oxford defense got to find a way to slow down number 14 quarterback Blake Hawkins. Option play to the left. He will pitch to Davis and Davis is met right about the line of scrimmage. 
by the Jackets. Tanner Lloyd gave up a lot of size to, to Davis that time, but Lloyd got the better of that one. Davis was rocked over there, but to his credit, stayed on his feet. I mean, he took a couple of big licks over there, but still standing tall out of bounds for the Falcons. Second and nine, a little screen pass. Davis has it, has some blockers in front of him. He accelerates, and he's got his first down to the jacket, 32. So Florence, that's about the third or fourth time they have used that screen play to perfection. Davis, not the biggest guy on the field, but he's a double tough customer. Watch this. In a lot of traffic, comes and takes a hit, sheds two tacklers, takes another tackler head on, takes three or four guys to bring him down. Outstanding effort by Davis. Hawkins throws to his right, has his receiver. That is Ari Smith. And that's going to be a late hit. Also, correction, that was number three, William Barrett on interception. That is going to be a late hit over there on Oxford. And it looks like they may call that one on outside linebacker senior Jacob Shake. And it's pretty obvious he hit him out of bounds. Not anything malicious, but that's going to add on some more yards. And now, here, here's the thing with Florence, if you're a Florence fan. You've been down in the scoring territory twice already. Here's your third opportunity, and this will wind up after the penalty, Mickey, being their best opportunity. They're now at the 11-yard line with a first down. If you're Florence, you got to cash this one in. You've had three opportunities, and we'll see the replay here. Nice throw, nice catch. Knocked out of bounds. There's the hit. Sent, again, not malicious, but that, that little extra push there at the end. Hawkins swings it out to Russell. And Russell is taken down by the Jackets. Ronnie Isaac after a gain of about four. So here we are again. Florence for the third consecutive series in scoring position. This their deepest penetration of the game. They're inside the Oxford 10 seven yard line and this is where you kind of look for Hawkins maybe we've seen his wheels we've seen his legs he's pretty good at that quarterback keeper let's see if they go with that Lawrence can get a first down at about the one and Davis is inside the five it's going to be about third and two and a half we'll mark the ball at about the three and a half as you said Mickey they can get a first down at the one certainly four down territory no question about that for the Florence Falcons. Watch the quarterback Hawkins here. Starting to see some Oxford defenders with hands on the hip. Maybe getting tired and Hawkins walks in untouched. Figured they would go with that read option with Hawkins that time. That's exactly what they did. He put it in the belly of his running back and then kept it himself around the end. We'll see that on the touchdown here. Good fake. Juggled the ball just for a moment, but basically walked in untouched for a Florence touchdown. Again, extra points and field goals are uncontested, so this will basically be a free kick here. Oxford's on the field, but they cannot attempt a block. That's a bad snap. Nothing that Oxford can do about that, but that's going to automatically nullify the attempt. So even with a free kick, Mickey, they can't even get an attempt going, and Oxford maintains the lead. So Oxford maintains the lead at 7-6. to six. And we will go to break as we do another look at the touchdown here by Hawkins. Dive into some great deals this summer at Superior Hyundai and make a splash with Tires for Life. Superior Hyundai is offering you Tires for Life with every Superior Hyundai purchase. Superior Hyundai's already come with America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 mile powertrain, and now Tires for Life. Good credit, bad credit, we can get you approved. Don't wait. Hurry into Superior Hyundai in Aniston or visit us on the web at SuperiorHyundaiAL.com and like us on Facebook. Robert McKay, he told you he was a conservative. <laughs> he didn't tell the truth. The same liberal union bosses who backed Barack Obama's left-wing agenda are bankrolling Robert McKay's campaign. They want bigger government, higher taxes, more spending. And they even paid for the mail piece in which Robert McKay calls himself a conservative. Why do liberals pay for his campaign? Because he's one of them. And we are back. Mickey Shadricks, John Holder with you. Oxford and Florence battling it out here in game seven of the TV 24 Regional Gridiron Challenge. Oxford with the football. Swing it out to Trey Gamble. And nice tackle there 
by Florence's Lamar Lee to ensure that Gamble was not able to break free. You know, Gamble, you have to hold your breath if you're an opponent because every time he gets the ball, even on a short swing pass like that, he's so strong. I, I think that's one of the things that we don't talk about enough with Trey Gamble. So good at breaking tackles because he's deceptive with the upper body strength he has. And if you don't get a good read on him, you don't get a good solid tackle. That guy can break tackles and go to the house. Almost did it that time. Second down and five. Thomas Rudolph after the game of tailback. And Rudolph has stood up at the 36, maybe the 37. And that's going to set up a third and short now for the Jackets, who you almost sense need to get a first down or two here. Their defense getting a little tired because Florence has put together some time-consuming drives, about three good drives in a row. Mickey read my mind. That's exactly what I was thinking. That's why this is a key third down is because if they have another three and out, they're going to put the defense back out there. And the Florence offense has been on the field for most of this game so far. As you mentioned, a lot of long, time-consuming possessions. Oxford defense started to show a little bit of that on that last possession. They can ill afford to have another three and out here. Third and three. A little mix-up in the backfield. And Rudolph is going to be taken down by Josh Cobb along with... Big number 93, Malik Mansell, and Florence does come up with the with the defensive stand, and that Florence offense that seems to really be clicking, going to get the football back. That is an impressive defensive line for Florence. 93, Malik Mansell, 92, Edwin Johnson, 91, Jordan Dollarson. John, speaking of Mansell, there we get a look at LSU defensive coordinator John Chavis who said, hey, I can't talk to you. I'm on an official visit, but you can let everyone know I'm here. <laughs> and uh, he is here to check out Mansell. I'm sure he's also looking at D. Smith and probably Trey Gamble. A lot of prospects here on the field. Uh, Coach Chavis, one of, I understand, 25 coaches and scouts that have been here today checking out a number of college prospects performing here at the Regional Gridiron Challenge. And here we see a little swing pass to the tailback Adams and he picks up great yardage out around midfield so a another first down for this Florence offense and here come the Falcons again and we see John Shavis sitting over there on the opposite side he's sitting no mistake on the Florence side sitting in those old reserved red seats over there on the old uh, home side here at JSU football is loose and the Jackets have it I believe number 17 Connor Sire fell on it as Hawkins and Adams had a mix-up, and Florence has really been their own worst enemy here. This is another drive that they kind of shot themselves in the foot, and the Jackets, opportunistic defense here. They get the fumble recovery. Really, Florence has had four really good scoring opportunities in this game, only cashed in on one, botched the extra point, and they still trail 7-6. to six. Going back to John Chavis, if you're not familiar, really a, known as a defensive guru, defensive coordinator at LSU. Before that, longtime defensive coordinator with Phil Fulmer at Tennessee. Weber going for a home run here. Gamble incomplete. Penalty is thrown. The coverage was being provided by Lamar Lee. I don't think Lee interfered. They may I say think, Gamble reached over his shoulder. I think we're going to get an offensive pass interference because there's a chance that he could have intercepted that pass, but Gamble put his hand on his shoulder and knocked him to the turf. So I think we may see an offensive pass interference here against Tredarian Gamble. So this would be a big penalty against the Jackets because they had great field position after the fumble recovery, but now they're going to be back way up after the offensive pass interference call against Trey Gamble. And I think another good call by the officials. We'll see it right here. And you'll see he puts his hands, goes and grabs the around the shoulder and the neck of the defender there. And Lee did have a chance to possibly intercept that pass without that interference. So I think an excellent call by the officials here. And that's a 15-yard penalty. And now it's first down and a long way to go for the Yellow Jackets. They'd have to get all the way down to the Florence 33 for a first down. So Oxford just looking for something positive here, and they get it. Ty Weber scampers out to about the 50-yard line. He was taken down by Blake Casimir. And he gets a good bit of that yardage back. Matter of fact, most of the penalty yardage, and it'll be second down and 11. So a little bit of the speed of the big prospect that 
John Chavis is here looking at Keaton Anderson, the linebacker. He was behind the play, but he tracked down Ty Weber from behind and was able to grab his feet and trip him up and seeing some of the outstanding speed there from the 6'1", 215, soon to be senior linebacker from Florence. Weber looking over the defense, second down and 11. Turns it loose to Gamble. Gamble reaches forward for a couple of extra yards inside the 45-yard line. For a gain of four, so that'll set up a third down and six play coming up here for the Jackets, who possibly in four-down territory. You know, Gamble's just one of those guys that once he catches the ball, it seems like he's always able to get two or three or four extra yards. Every time, even with a good tackle, he's always able to lean forward and get three or four extra just like he did on that play right there. So third down and six for the Jackets. Let's see if Weber goes to the air again. He goes deep, double coverage, some contact, and we're going to get a penalty flag thrown. This is going to be pass interference against Florence. There you see the intended receiver for the Jackets. Number eight, Ontarius Truitt. He was sandwiched by two Florence defenders. I believe that was Smith and Alexander in the secondary. Two senior defensive backs, and I really think they may actually call that one on D. Smith. He's the other prospect, 6'2", 195, a safety. Both uh, Keaton Anderson and D. Smith are listed as three-star prospects. Both of those guys are listed amongst the top 20 players in the state of Alabama. We'll see on the replay here. Good, nice, deep throw there by Weber, and right in front of him, kind of impeding the progress there. Not blatant, but we did see D. Smith with the pass interference. Offsetting penalties, though, they call Oxford for holding. So we'll basically replay the down. Okay. Third down and six. Florence showing blitz. Here they come. Weber gets the pass away. It is caught. And on the reception there, Sears, who's hit out of bounds by that outstanding linebacker, Keaton Alexander, at the 40-yard line. And this will set up a fourth and two. Interesting call now coming up for Coach Ryan Harris. This is a makeable fourth down now with fourth and two. Good, nice catch. Turns it up the field. Able to get some extra yards there. And because he was able to get three or four extra yards, that presents this fourth and two at the 40, which is, which is makeable for Oxford. Uh, Play clock is running at 17, 16, 15 seconds. They got to make a decision quicker. They may have to use their only timeout that they get in this fourth quarter, but 8, 7, 6 as they come to the line should the, get this play off. The play is in from offensive coordinator Randy Paget. Fourth down and two. Weber leaves it with Smith, and he is taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Penetration that time by Jordan Dollarson. And so the Florence defense comes up with the big stop, and their offense will have good field position. Dollarson and Keaton Anderson, the linebacker, were there again to make that play. We'll look at the replay. We'll see the penetration by Dollarson coming from the outside. And then there's Keaton to clean it up for a loss of two. And the ball goes over to Florence. So another opportunity here for the Florence Falcons. Time getting to be an issue. 7.48 to go in the game. Florence down by a point. The difference in the game, that missed extra point. And now another flag. So penalties becoming a big factor in this game. Motion penalty. I think they're going to get C.J. Russell. He was going in motion. I think he may have left a tad bit early. So uh, this is uh, another time where we've seen Florence start off with a first and long situation. Mentioned the 25 college coaches here in addition to LSU being represented. I know I've seen some coaches from West Alabama, Southern Miss, Arkansas State, South Alabama. Mississippi so, State. Mississippi State. A lot of folks here. So first and 15. Let's see if the Falcons can recover from the, the penalty. Hawkins to put it in the air on first down. He's got his man open. That is C.J. Russell. Football came loose at the end, but they'll mark him down at about the 43-yard line, so a gain of eight. Russell, the little guy, gets most of the, well, he gets all of the penalty yards, plus a couple of banks, so second down and eight. And there's a coach from Northern Illinois, from the Huskies there. They're coming literally not just from the south, but all over the country here to Jacksonville. See all this great talent on display here with 16 teams 
playing here in a single day. It's great for a college recruiter because you can come and see 16 teams and you can see teams from all over North and Central Alabama here in one stop in one day. And if you're a Northern Illinois, you probably don't get a chance often to come down to the South. So when you can see 16 teams play in a day, this is a place to be. Hawkins almost break, broke free there, but great defensive play by Thomas Rudolph to take him off his feet for a minimal gain. So here's another third down, third and six. Florence at their 45-yard line. Here is Adams out of the backfield, and he is very close to first down yardage. Wait a minute, that correction, that is Jacoby Bird, and Bird is stopped. They'll mark him at the 50, so that's going to leave him about a yard short. Interesting decision here for Coach Wallace. Fourth down, a solid yard to go. The ball at the 50, and no question they're going to go for it. And again, like we called down on the goal line with a touchdown, this is where you look for that read option with Blake Hawkins here with fourth and only yard to go. Huge, huge play in this game. Fourth and a yard. Hawkins looking to the sideline. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Nine, eight, seven. He's got to hurry, though. Hawkins keeps it himself, and he won't get there. Great stand by the Oxford defense. Play took a little too long to develop. And the Jackets come up with another big stop against the Florence offense. Well, if, if I can call the play, Mickey, I'm sure the Oxford defense can call the play, no question. And we knew that Hawkins was coming on that quarterback read. That's exactly the way it was, but just too slow in developing, as you mentioned, and great penetration by the Oxford defense there as they snuff it out and stop him basically for no gain. And now Oxford has an opportunity here, Mickey, with a ball inside the 50-yard line, 542 to go. They could put together a drive here that could seal the game away. Plenty of time left, 5.42 as Oxford begins this possession. Weber to throw on first down, gets it off to Rudolph. Rudolph, good yardage after the catch, taken off his feet, feet by Florence's Spencer Curry, but a good positive gain on first down for the Jackets. Now anytime you can get nine yards on first down, that really opens up what you can do with your running game. And it's a great play by Rudolph. Nice catch over the middle, puts his head down, falls forward, gets a couple of extra yards. A very makeable second and about a yard and a half here. Love the play call. Oxford going for it. A lot of teams would just run it there and try to run clock, but Oxford senses they probably have got to get something going offensively the way Florence has moved the football. And here we see a busted play behind the line of scrimmage. Weber and Rudolph, and the football came loose. A Florence defender's got it. Let's see what the officials say. Jordan Dollarson has the football, but the official's going to say the whistle blew and the play is going to be called dead at the 45-yard line. Look at the replay here. Of course, there is no replay in high school football, but there's the collision in the backfield. And there's the stand-up, and they kind of ripped the ball out, but the officials are going to say that the whistle had already blown there, so they'll give it back to Oxford. You know, Dollarson is lining up at that left defensive end, John, and Oxford, when they run to the left, they're, they're not really accounting for him, but he is so quick down that line that they're going to have to, they're going to, have to, to chip him or something because that's a couple of times he has made a big play behind the line of scrimmage going the other way. Weber rolling to his right. Throws downfield and just throws that one away. Had one man in coverage there, and Weber may have been across. Well, oh, they've got a flag over there. Yeah, intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. Yeah, that's going to be big because that's a loss of down, Nicky. So not only do they get the big penalty, but they also get a loss of down. Now, the officials are discussing this a little bit, so let's see. This may not be finalized as of yet. As we're going to have a conference over here with a couple of these guys. I'm very impressed by this defensive front of Florence. Malik Mansell, Edwin Johnson, of course, Dollarson. Just watching that time, Mansell, they're going to wave it off. That's what I thought was happening over there. The official, the back judge, came over there and was kind of talking and saying, uh, hey, let's rethink this, and so they'll wave it off. But nonetheless, it's still fourth down, and we'll see a punt here, a virtual punt by Oxford. 
By the way, John, just got word that the Alexandria girls have won the state softball championship. So we want to send our congratulations out to the Lady Valley Cubs state champions in girls softball. You know, Alexandria playing here last night uh, in the uh, spring jamboree, the Calhoun County jamboree here last night. And, you know, the Alexandria folks on the sideline really excited about that. They were giving me updates. They were excited. Their team won last night against Central of Florence and put them in the winner's bracket, and they took care of business today down at Lagoon Park in Montgomery. So congratulations to the Alexandria Valley Cubs state champions. And uh, we got another group of Yellow Jackets coming <laughs> from the Etowah County area. The Glencoe Yellow Jackets of Coach Lee Osmond and the Aniston Bulldogs. You see Glencoe warming up, stretching, as uh, they're getting ready to take the field here in just a few moments. Here so Florence the... now, John, with the football and time to possibly put together a game-winning drive. They're down by a point. Passes away and caught by Seigel. And credit Hawkins that time. He was in some trouble. The pocket broke down. Had to break free and just buy himself some time and found his big target, Seigel, kind of dragging across the field. Big gain of nine yards. Big tight end that time. Said, I'm going to catch this one. The last time he tipped it and was an interception, he brought that one down for a nine-yard gain. Oxford very nearly jumping off sides again, and that would have given Florence a first down. Hawkins leaves it with Davis. Davis, good blocking on the corner. And he picks up a huge gain out across the 40-yard line. So, again, Florence really got it going offensively here. Davis, a tough little running back, really sees the field well. Bounces outside, picks up his blocker, waited on the blocker to pick up the defender, then shot the gap and ran over a couple of Oxford defenders. Big time run there for a first down. And now we've got uh, some discussion amongst the officials here. See what this is about. Don't see a flag on the field. Been fairly impressed today with the uh, the lack of penalties by teams, which is a little unusual in a spring game. But there is have, a penalty. We have certainly uh, seen a lot of the refs in this one. A lot of penalty flags. It was a personal foul penalty called against Oxford. They basically declined that, and because it was the first down anyway, so a first down for Florence after the big run by Davis. Official pausing play. Let the chains get set up on the far side. Now we're ready. Clock begins to move again. Here is Adams. Breaks one tackle, turns the corner. Rudolph gets a hold of him. The flag comes in on that play. That'll be a horse collar on Rudolph as he grabbed him around the nape of the neck there. And that was a pretty obvious call as well. So another penalty against Oxford. All of a sudden, here come the Falcons with 316 to go inside Oxford territory at the 46. Bouncing outside, and there's what we think is the horse collar, but now it looks like it may be a holding against Florence. That's going to be the call, holding against Florence. So a fortunate turn of events if you're an Oxford fan. I think everybody thought when it was thrown because he grabbed him by the shoulder pads that it might be a uh, horse collar, but instead a hold against the Falcons. Still first down and only nine yards to go, but it wiped out the Big play that time by Adams. Spot foul backs it up to the 45-yard line, but as John said, still a first down, first and nine. As we near the three-minute mark of the game. Hawkins right up the middle to Davis, and Davis taken off his feet there by the Jackets. K.J. Adams, a good shoestring tackle there. Adams to keep that gain being a big play. Keep it to a gain of about five. So it'll be second down and four now for the Falcons as they, again, no huddle. Moving quickly here. Adams pushes forward, looks as though forward progress will give him the first down. Going to be really close. May have to have a measurement. Stopping the clock here, which is fortunate. The time is getting to be an issue for Florence. 2.25 to go. And Mickey, even though they can conceivably kick a field goal to win this thing, the last time they could not even get the snap off. So you figure that Florence is going to have to score a touchdown to win this game. You know, most teams haven't had much time to practice special teams in the spring, so 
Uh, I agree with you. I, I don't know if Coach Wallace, he got close enough if he would put the game into the hands of a, of a special teams unit who hasn't had much work so far this spring. They're going to bring the chains out for a measurement. That will be a first down by the, about the nose of the football. Mickey, we've seen Glencoe warming up. I also noticed on that northeast corner hill up there, the Aniston Bulldogs are out. That's Glencoe's opponent. And Glencoe, I uh, should say, Aniston kind of being like the Georgia Bulldogs. They got the black jerseys out, so we may have a, a blackout like we see in Athens from time to time here at Burgess Snowfield from the Aniston Bulldogs tonight. That game coming up right after the conclusion of this one. It's been a good one, a, a low-scoring game, but a great game. Hawkins. Turns it loose for his big tight end, Seigel. Good coverage by Rudolph, but he's such a big target. He makes the catch near the first down marker at the 36-yard line. I think he will have the first down. He had to go to the 36. They're going to mark it just inside the 36. So they're going to go ahead and say first down. I don't think the big guy's going to drop another pass, Mickey. I think they can go to him all night. After he tipped that one in the air, uh, he has not missed one since. Again, time definitely a factor. And any time Oxford can do this, when Florence runs the ball, if they can keep it to a minimal gain, you know, each team only has a timeout, one timeout. So Florence may have to start putting the ball in the air here. Clock is an issue, 145 and counting. And as we said, they probably need a touchdown and 33 yards to get to the goal line. Back to the running game, Davis. Tries to break it outside, then cuts it back, and good hard running down to about the 24. That's going to be a first down for Florence as they are inching their way closer. Davis is a great yards after contact runner. Very rarely this afternoon and this evening have we seen him go down after the first contact. And look at Florence lined up, ready to go as the official winds the clock. And now we've got to the timeout, Oxford. I think Oxford did indeed call a timeout. That is their only timeout left. And I think we've got some uh, Oxford cheerleaders going to throw out some T-shirts for us, Mickey. All right, Dr. Ray and Dr. Lawler, we've seen them here all day. And they're once again sponsoring our T-shirts here at the TV24 Regional Gridiron Challenge. And some lucky Oxford fans going to go home with some souvenir T-shirts. Absolutely. We've been throwing those out. Uh, for the last three days, we threw a lot out Thursday. We threw some out on Friday. We've thrown a ton out today here. And there'll be folks uh, in Centerville and Birmingham and Florence and Tuscumbia wearing TV24 Regional Gridiron Challenge shirts, no doubt. So out of the timeout, we're going to have a minute 28 to play. Florence, I don't think they've called their, they've used their timeout. So they can stop the clock once. Coach Herring using his timeout there to give his defense a chance to regroup. It'll be first down at the 24-yard line. 24 yards, 128 to go in this contest. Aniston and Glencoe standing by, antsy to play their game. Hawkins, play action pass, man wide open, touchdown. William Barrett got behind the secondary, and it was a beautiful executed play. Hawkins standing back there tall in the pocket. His receiver breaks free, and Florence has their first lead of the night, and it comes with a minute 22 left in the game. Great route running by Barrett, wide open at the goal line. Good connection from Hawkins. Now, this is very important, Mickey. Remember, they could not even get off the extra point last time, and here's where Florence is going to take their one timeout. He may consider going for two here, and I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to call this time out their last one to get a good two point play to go ahead 14 to 7 here. Well they've been knocking on the door on numerous drives for various reasons the Oxford defense has come up with big stops but they when it counted Hawkins to Barrett through the air and Florence getting their first lead here with a minute 22 to play. And I agree, John, I think going for two here is an absolute no brainer. Yeah, when you, when you can't even get the ball down for the for a free extra point like it was the last time, no doubt you go for two. And I tell you, I, I think the last time I said Hawkins when they were down the goal line, I, I'm not so sure now they've got a lot of weapons to go to. They're lining up the big tight end over here as a wide out. Maybe look for them to go to the big tight end cycle over here. Hawkins, he looks that way, looking for him, 
and he makes the catch. John Holder called it, and why not? Seigel has been Mr. Dependable the last several times they've thrown his way, and he not bad coverage at all. He's just, again, just such a big target, and uh, Hawkins laid it up perfectly. Now, Mickey, it wasn't hard to predict. When they lined him up at wide receiver, they have a big mismatch with him as far as a body. And you throw that fade pattern into the end zone when you have a, a physical mismatch, and that's what you get. And apparently this guy's been real determined, as we pointed out earlier. That's the uh, that's the touchdown right there. And Florence has the 14-7 lead. Let's see what At RMC, we love serving people in the small towns of Northeast Alabama. The lifestyle, the food, the people. But make no mistake, there's nothing small about the care we provide. In fact, we're a member of the UAB Cancer Network and have the Blue Distinction Award for cardiac care and are rated in the top 5% in the country by the Commission on Cancer. It's not about the size of the town. It's not about the size of the town. It's not about the size of the town. It's about the strength of our regional health system. Riverside, Heflin. There's no better deal than a Talladega Bill deal. We know Talladega's a little bit out of the way, but our drive-out prices crush the competition. Come get your Bill deal from Bill Stanford in Talladega today. Come on out to Bill Stanford in Talladega. We are back at JSU Stadium. A minute 22 left here. Oxford, do they have one more big play left in them? Down now by seven, trailing for the first time tonight. And Ty Weber rolling out and throws it way too high for Trey Gamble out at the 43. Yeah, you know Florence is going to be locked in on Tredarian Gamble. That's the guy that's the, if there's one guy on this Oxford team that can beat you in this situation, it's number 21, Trey Gamble. So you know they're going to be locked down on him for sure here in this last 117. showing pressure off the edge they bring it Weber gets rid of it to gamble gamble breaks a tackle and that's why he is so dangerous he gets it across or they're gonna mark him down at midfield and they're gonna have a flag come in at the end of the play they're gonna either get Smith of Florence or Truett of Oxford see the replay look at the stiff arm by gamble we talk about his strength and there's a great example on the stiff arm now after the play this might be an offsetting penalty deal. I'm not sure. I kind of saw both players pushing each other. So we'll see if this is offsetting or whether there's going to be one player that maybe did a little bit more than that after the play activity. Big call here. Offsetting penalties. That's what I thought. There was pushing on both sides. I think the officials got that one right. Certainly. It's kind of a warning that guys, we're yeah. watching. Don't do it again because it might be on you next time at offsetting penalties. And Oxford in business now at the 50-yard line. Trey Gamble making just so strong. Yeah. That stiff arm. And that's who you got to go to. I think that in this situation, you don't have enough time to, to, to put together a long drive. You've got to have a big play. And I don't care how many guys are covering you. <laughs> I'm far. I'm going to double team him for sure. I'm not going to have single coverage out there. with time going for gamble and great coverage by lamar lee who was right in his hip pocket gamble wanted interference and didn't get the call safety was a little late getting over i'm surprised the safety was that far off the play watch watch gamble here basically in one-on-one -on -one coverage oakley is late getting over there he was then at the end of the play but you're right mickey he was 10 yards away and in a situation like that when that ball's going down to the star receiver you got to be over there faster than that that was almost a touchdown. Weber looking that way again. This time he's pressured and he's going to go down. And they bring the big star middle linebacker that time, Keaton Anderson. Anderson was the guy coming up the middle. We see why he's a big-time SEC prospect as they brought the house that time. He has been offered, Mickey, by Alabama, Tennessee, LSU, Miami, Duke, Clemson, Kentucky, Louisville, basically just about everybody in the South in college football. His dad and his granddad both played at Tennessee, so you kind of figure maybe... 
maybe he'll lean that way. But uh, he showed why he's a big time prospect with that sack right there. And he rolled Thompson, the other linebacker, number three, looks like a pretty good player himself. Weber back to throw again and almost intercepted by Jawan Thompson. Not sure who Weber was throwing to there. Well, this is it. Fourth down. We're going to be looking at about 18 yards to go for Oxford with only 18 seconds left. Fourth down and 18 with 18 seconds to go. Oxford at their own 42 yard line. So this is it for the Yellow Jackets. And look for number 21 to Darian Gamble here. Jackets down to one final play. And we've got a penalty flag. Delay of game. So another five yards. The play caught wound up. Oxford couldn't do anything. They didn't have a timeout. So now instead of fourth and 18, you're looking at fourth down and 23. So five yards penalty marked off. And again, Oxford, 18 seconds left. They've got to get it all the way down to the Florence 40 just to get a first down. So Gamble is split to the near side. Thompson showing blitz right up the middle. They bring some pressure. Weber lobs it up for Gamble, who makes the catch. First down at the 32-yard line. He did not get out of bounds, so here's the deal. They're going to have to spike the football here. 11 seconds to go, because once they set the, the ball into play, the clock will start at the 31-yard line. And John, why the free safety is not cheating further over to that side of the field, I, I just don't know. <laughs> I, I would take the risk, too. I, I would put three guys on Shadarian Gamble. I'd do whatever I could. If it meant holding him at the line of scrimmage, knocking him down at the line, whatever it took, I would not let Shadarian Gamble beat me. If somebody else does it, that's fine. But right now, this guy is just a major league, big-time high school wide receiver, as we've seen. And now Oxford's got a chance, one at least, maybe two plays here, yeah. maybe two shots at the end zone. And I'm telling you guys, if Lawrence doesn't know this already, it's going to 21. D. Smith, the talented safety, is over there along with Lee. See if they bracket coverage. They do. Gamble is running toward the end zone. Pass just too far out of bounds. And Lee came up with the interception, but out of bounds. <laughs> Even though they had three wide receivers on this side, Mickey, we, they're going to go to Gamble. I mean, when you got the stud, you go and you use him. And uh, they did bracket him that time. Three seconds to go. I'm telling you, it's coming to 21. You better get ready. Barring a defensive penalty. This will be the final play of the game. They're going to bring Gamble over to the near side, the short side of the field, and split three receivers to the right side. This is going to be fun to watch here. Six defensive backs for Florence. Weber goes up top toward the end zone. And it's incomplete. Penalty flag, no. The Oxford fans were hoping for one in the end zone. Gamble was hoping for one. But that'll be your ball game as Florence makes the long trip down to Jacksonville and defeats the Oxford Yellow Jackets by a final of 14-7. to An absolutely fantastic game. Well, they gave three shots at the end to Jadarian Gamble. Here's the last one. They had three guys finally covering him over there. Could have been some interference. Could have been. Could have been. No, that's a judgment call there. But I tell you, that shows the respect and rightfully so that you need to show to Jadarian Gamble. I tell you, we're going to see a lot of highlights on Pigskin Roundup this year of Jadarian Gamble. There's no doubt about that. Again, great, great game here between uh, two great high school football programs. Fans in attendance got their money's worth out of this one. Florence and Oxford, the Falcons come out on top by a final of 14 to 7. We'll have our ERA King Real Estate Player of the Game announcement coming up shortly. And I think John and I both are going to 
agree unanimously on who that will be. I'm going to keep it right here and hope to get a word with Oxford coach Ryan Herring before we step aside for a break. Blinko and Aniston have made their way onto the field and will begin their warm-ups. Mickey, something interesting happened right now. First time in many, many years Oxford and Aniston are in the same stadium and on the same field. Since the last time they played down at Lamar Field several years ago, they are now on the same field. And look, look at Oxford and Aniston. Look at this shot right here. Look at them shaking hands with each other. Look at the Aniston players and the Oxford players, the interaction down here in this end zone. The Aniston players actually lining up Mickey and the Oxford players lining up and shaking hands with each other. Yeah, that's an awesome shot right there. An awesome shot of Aniston and Oxford. Look at that great sportsmanship, the next door neighbors after all of these years wishing each other well. Oh, all these young men know each other. And uh, so we'll head down to the field now. Gerhard standing by. Thanks, guys. I'm in with uh, Oxford head coach Ryan Herring. Coach, obviously not the score you wanted on the scoreboard, but talk about the way your guys competed and the way this entire spring went. Spring was great. Uh, you know, the game was was great. Uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't win right there at the end. Uh, but we got good effort uh, out of the kids. Florence got a good team. Uh, so it was great, uh, just a great venue. Everything was great about it. You know, I'm happy with spring and, uh, you know, can't wait to do this again next year. Talk about some of the plays that Shadarian and Gamble made this entire game. Well, he's the best receiver in Alabama, and, I mean, that's hands down. Everybody knows that. So, you know, we need him to make those kind of plays if we're going to be successful. Uh, but he made, you know, two catches that, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't make, especially in double coverage. Uh, but he makes it look easy. So, you know, we always got a chance if he's in there. You guys now build for the summer and then fall camp. Talk about just the, the preparation from here on out, what that will consist of and the foundation you want to build. Well, the, the kids know what's expected. We're going to work hard uh, June, July. we got two months to get ready for that first game at Southside Gas. And so, uh, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be tough. But uh, if they're out there, we know they love it. Absolutely. Thank you, Coach. Great showing by your kids, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Gerhard. We'll step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll have our ERA King Real Estate Player of the Game announcement. Then coming up, Aniston and Glencoe. Keep it here. We continue with our live coverage of the TV24 Regional Gridiron Challenge. Hi, this is Vernon Thomas, General Manager, Sonny King, Toyota, and Scion. And this May, that's right, we're racing for a record. We're going to break all the new sales records this month, and you're going to be the winner. You can save $5,000 off MSRP on all new Camrys, Tundras, Highlanders, Benzes, Avalon. We got so many deals we don't have time to talk about. Come experience the King difference at all new Sunny King, Toyota, and Scion on a new motor mile in Oxford, Alabama. Where the customer is king. The physical therapists and athletic trainers at Dr. Clinton Ray Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy are dedicated to bringing the patients of Northeast Alabama the most advanced therapy treatments available to return you to your active lifestyle. Dr. Clinton Ray and Dr. Jeffrey Lawler are both committed to providing excellent surgical care of your orthopedic needs. The doctors and therapy staff have the desire and experience to treat you like a world-class athlete, but with a personal touch. For an affordable private Christian education, choose Cusa Christian School in Gadsden. Cusa Christian offers a Bible-based biblical worldview curriculum for a solid spiritual foundation while also providing the highest standards in academics, activities, and athletics. Cusa Christian can accommodate your child from daycare through the 12th grade with 90% of our graduates going to college and 63% of them receiving scholarships. Plus, our nine athletic programs compete in the Alabama High School Athletic Association. For more information, call our office or visit online. We're making a new Honda at Sunny King Honda more affordable than ever with low, low lease payments all month long. Lease a new 14 Accord LX for only $199 a month. Lease the all-new 14 Civic LX for only $159 a month. We have a great selection of certified used Honda, all with a 7-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Sunny King Honda exit 188 off Interstate 20 on Highway 78 East in Oxford, where customer satisfaction is king. And we are back. Uh, Mickey Shadricks and John Holder now set to announce our ERA King Real Estate Player of the Game. And this was an easy choice, John. Number 14, the quarterback, Blake Hawkins, had an outstanding game in his first game as a starter, replacing Kendrick Doss. We see some big pass plays, also did it in the running game as uh, he was able to go into the end zone for a touchdown on one occasion. You see that touchdown right here. Uh, just an outstanding player. Going to be a great player, I think, for Coach J.B. Wallace 
up at Florence High School, Blake Hawkins, our EA ERA Team Real Estate Player of the Game with a winning touchdown pass there at the end of the game in the last two minutes as Florence beats Oxford 14 to 7. But Mick, I'll tell you something. I think uh, you have to agree with Coach Ryan Herring. I think the best wide receiver in the state we saw him tonight, Trey Campbell of Oxford. There you see the matchup coming up next. Glen Cohen Aniston for John Holder. Mickey Shadrick saying so long and stand by as Carl Brady and Gerhard Mathangani will join you for the call of Aniston Glen Cohen.